the power and the glory. Adonai Melech Elohim Naman. Come on, just enter, enter, enter. How did I embrace your relationship? Get in union. Get in union with God. sits upon the throne. Hey! With all the seraphim, with all the orphanim, with all the cherubim, with all the beings that surround the throne of God. Jesus Christ is Lord. Yours is the King, the power and the glory. Yours is the King, the power and the glory. Yours is the King. The power and the glory, Adonai Melech Elohim Naman. You may be seated. Wow. How many men who were in the prayer meeting and who remember bringing your talit with you? Brought your talit with you? We might have to borrow yours to put on other people. Who brought your talit with them? Let me see. Brought your talit? If you're a man, a head of the house, let me see your hand if you brought a talit with you. Is this Matt or is this somebody else? Matt looks clean. <laughs> Jesus. Hey, young brother, you look clean. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You looking for a wife? Is that it? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we're going to we're going to we're going to do anointing this morning. If you are online, we welcome all of you online. My name is Adonia Okechuku Obonaya Wa Ibani Wa Anebu Um Anebi. And the pastor of the church. <laughs> the pastor of the church. A shoddy, Benedicta, senior, Njomu, Waningene, Nwebo, Nwekwensi, Obonaya. Hallelujah. See, don't, don't listen to these Africans when they tell you their name. My name is John. Their name is not John. Their name is some... I'll, I'll leave. I'll, it's not good to swear in church. So, <laughs> the, the name is so long, they just shorten it for you. All right. Now, every African's got three or four names. <laughs> and it's just like, and I go, just call me John. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, man. Isn't, isn't Jonathan good on that thing, on that piano? And Roger. 
Roger is back. All right, we still need we still need a bassist. We need we need a guitarist and we need a saxophonist. Bring a trumpet if you want to. We need instrumentalists because we have singers. As you can hear, you can sing. Amen. The Lord is good. We're going to do an anointing, and the people online. I was talking to you. If you're a man, get your talit. If you're a woman, don't put on the talit. Put it by your side. Because we're going to speak to it. We're going to speak to you today. Not because, now remember this. The year does not determine our blessings. We do not worship the sun. We do not worship the moon. But we do know that the turning and changing of the times affects the way of life on earth. So we want to tune the year. We want to tune at least the sun not to smite us by day. Not the moon to smite us by night. We want to turn the stars to live in our houses peaceably. Okay, I know they want to talk about church, stuff like that in church, do we? <laughs> we want to make sure that our stars are living in our sun peaceably. That our star is living in our moon peaceably. That our stars are living in, a, in the planetary systems peaceably. That the days will tune our life for increase. Amen? Like he said, the sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. And because you have come under the banner of the Messiah, the son of Abraham, a child, a child of Israel, Yeshua HaMashiach, huh? there is no sorcery or divination against you. Come on, say amen, somebody. Say amen, somebody. You dwell in the heavenly places. You walk in the wonderful places, in the places where the angels walk. You walk in the throne room. You walk around the pavement of gold and you walk upon the sea of glass. You are a child of God. You were born from above, not from the earth. You are <laughs> you are the image of God, the likeness of God, the one who walks like God upon the face of the earth. Now, beloved, we are the sons of God. We do not know what we will look like, but we know that every time he appears, we just look like him. Somebody say, yeah! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost glory and honor hallelujah they asked me who is your God I told them my God has no name yet he has a name he's beyond all names he's beyond all glory he's beyond all words he's beyond all scripts he's beyond all acting he is God all by himself <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Preach, doctor. I met an angel and he said, would you worship me? I said, no, I can't worship you because I was made in the image and likeness of God. And which means that you are way below your pay grade. I said to the angel, do you know who I am? He says, you're a man. I said, yes, but you're wrong. Look closely. And the angel looked closely. And he fell down on his knees. I said, why are you falling on your knees? Because I see the Holy One inside of you. Ah, you're not listening to me. Hey! So I said to him, do you remember when he stood on the edge of nothingness and he said, let there be light. He said, I wasn't made yet. He said, but I need to remind you I was there. He said, you can't be there. You're not even old enough. I said, I was there before the world ever began. I was in the mind of God before he ever said, let there be light. I was born within him. Can I get a witness in the house? 
shout hallelujah. Don't let this flesh fool you. Hallelujah. Because I was with him when wisdom sang. I was with him when the angels sang. I was with him when the sons of God praised. I was with him when he was alone. In his thought, one as him. Hallelujah. 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 Went to the mountain and the mountain said, fall down and worship me. And I said to the mountain, who the... And the mountain says, shh, don't swear. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said to the mountain, just stop there. And the mountain says, well, I'm bigger than you. I said, no, you're not. I said, look into my heart. And he, the mountain bowed its head, looked into my heart and went, Oh no, and began to bow down, started turning itself to a valley. And I said, Why are you doing that? He said, I've seen the Holy One in you. Mountains and hills shall bow before Him. Hallelujah. It's not me, it's He that is in me. For greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. Somebody shout, Hallelujah. Do you know who you are? <laughs> For as he is, so are we. Oh, I could say some things today, but they will hang me for heresy. Glory be to God. God of heaven and earth, the unnameable one, the immortal as we just sang, the invincible one, the one who cannot be named, who's beyond all names, the one who gathers up all names himself, that God, that God, that God. That God. The nothing who is everything. The unnameable light. The ever expanding light. Limitless light that gives light. That God. Somebody said that God. That God lives in me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. So we end this short discussion before we start praying by saying that the message today is light. Message today is light. Oh, we know what they talk about light when the scientists describe it. But I think that the scientists are only describing what is materialistic and natural. They don't, they're not describing the supernatural light that flows from the very being of God. Can you talk about why light has wavelength? And they say something like light travels in a straight line. Where have you seen a straight line in nature? Okay, come on. Have you seen a straight line in nature? Show me one. There is no straight line in nature, which means that that's a lie. Light travels in a straight line only when it's being observed by limited people. Are you okay? The Bible says that God is light. 
So whatever you are observing in this world that you call light is an effect of material structures. Oh, by the way, when you put a fire, the fire opens up the dimension for the actual light to be revealed. The fire is not light. It produces light. It opens up the darkness so that the light can emerge. So light is a mystery. So we, some of the stuff we call light is not really light. It's an effect, an afterglow of the real light. So, 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 the Bible says, listen, the Bible says God is light. If you say light travel now for us because we need to be able to harness light to do what we do daily in our lives. But in reality, everything in the universe has got light. Even the devil. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Shouldn't I say that? Whoosh. Forgive me, Dr. Abinanti. Because I just... But, but, if, but, but the Bible says he even appears as an angel of light. You cannot do anything in this world if you don't engage light. And if you're not light, you have to pretend to be light. Oh, no, listen. Oh, come on. You've never seen any wicked person that came out and said, I'm a wicked person. They said, oh, you know, I'm a really good person. I, I want to do something nice for you. So they must take on light in order to do whatever they want to do. All right. But let's come back to God. God is light. Which means that, okay, let's, let's, let's describe God. Sorry, Father. Just, there's no way of doing that, but I'm going to talk as a human being. Uh, so, so, so God is light, right? God is omnipresent. God is everywhere. There's nothing hidden from God, right? Now, but we're not talking about the presence of God. We're talking about presence of God. I put the word there because the presence of God is different from God just being here. Because there's a presence, a presence is known by how it affects the person. Okay? Oh, come on. You, you are present, but you're not having an impact of me, on me. You, all right? The brothers, you know what it is. Women always say stuff like, you're listening, you're, not, you're hearing me, but you're not listening. Oh, you're not hearing me. I said, but I'm listening. No, you're not hearing me. I said, what did I just say? I heard you say, stop. I said, no, 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 no. What do you mean? You're not hearing me. I'm hearing you. But they go, you're hearing. You're not really hearing me. So, the fact that you are present doesn't mean you're present. So, God is everywhere. Everything is the effect of divinity, including Satan's. God didn't make a Satan, but they, they still are the result of God's creation. They are, becoming Satan is not the result of God's creation. But here's the thing about the light. God's light is in everything. According to these guys who are scientists, they tell us that there's light in this thing. There's light everywhere, right? So, I argue that light only travels and is perceived as traveling only when it needs to work or do something for us to be able to what? Produce. For us to be able to operate. But light is ubiquitous. It's everywhere. So the great question then becomes, why does it look like it's traveling? Why does light look like it's traveling? They tell us, oh, that light's been traveling for billions of years. And I go, bullocks. The reason you see it traveling is because you are not present. And you don't know who you are. The light that travels is not really the light. It's light. It travels. But it travels mainly because we perceive it as traveling. And it's traveling allows us to harness it to do what we need to do. And the reason that happens is because we have not opened up enough to experience the ubiquity of light. Uh, you know, listen. 
Because if I experience the ubiquity of light, which is experiencing God as God, light ceases to travel. I think this time is coming when we're going to see that light is everywhere. Our instruments don't really... So, if God is light and God is everywhere, it means that there is a kind of light that is everywhere at once. And there's a different kind of light that travels on wavelengths and everything, but God is everywhere. Now, I want, I want to show you this because it's important for you to understand that there's light in the world that is present everywhere. And that light, when harnessed, restructures the universe. Because that is the light that shines in darkness and the darkness does not comprehend it. Okay? A lot of the other light can just give up. Now we know light never disappears. Even the natural light that we talk about, that they tell us, I'm talking to the scientists in the room, they tell us that light travels. That light is a what? Is an expression, a very temporal expression of an eternal principle. Number two, God said, let there be light, right? So, what is light exactly? I said light is God, right? And then the Bible says, Jesus, you know, you've heard this message before, Jesus Christ is light, right? He said, I am the light. And then he turns around and he says to you, you are the light. So, in other words, the ubiquitous nature of God as light is who Jesus was. When Jesus came into the world, he may have been what? He may have been locally in one place, but the light that he was vibrated throughout creation. Number three, the light that you are is the light that Jesus is, is the light that God is. So what's the problem? The problem you are having is you're thinking of yourself as a traveling light, not as a ubiquitous light. You don't understand that as the light that is God and the God that is light, that your vibration is everywhere. And by the way, the reason you behave the way you behave and you act the way you act, you act negatively and you're so filled with fear is because you don't know the light that you are. I mean, I like that line in Sting's song. At night, a candle is brighter than the sun. That's an incredible statement. So which means that the light that you are overcomes any darkness. Okay, the question then becomes, how come I'm constantly experiencing darkness? All right. So, God is light. Jesus is light. You are light. Light is ubiquitous. Of course, light travels in wavelengths, right? But there's something about light that's said in the Bible. I know this, but I've never really taught it. The Bible says, Thy word is a lamp unto my, and a light unto my path. The passage we read says the voice of the Lord. Okay, let's say again. So, word is light. Let's right, just talk about the word of God. So let me tell you about it. Your voice is the habitation of light. Can I try it again? Your voice is a habitation of light. When your voice vibrates contrary to God, it does what? It diminishes light. Every time God wants to reveal himself as light, he sends a voice. Send somebody to John and say, who are you? He say, I'm a voice. Are you not listening? 
I'm a voice. <laughs> How do I manifest the light in me? The Bible says your voice is the habitation of light. So all that thing you're saying about yourself is a diminishing of light or the enhancement of light. It's very simple stuff. So my voice is the instrument. It's not just an instrument. It's light. But it's also the instrument for expanding light or for diminishing light. So it tacks up to what we learned last week about praise. So if my voice is the habitation of light, how I use it For myself, for the people around me, matters. So if there's darkness on earth, it's because your voice is being used wrongly. And God said, let there be light. The voice of the Lord cleaves the darkness. The voice of the Lord shatters the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord is what causes Orion to divide into seven. The voice of the Lord is what causes the bear to have baby. The voice of the Lord is what causes the dragon to call back upon itself and release its victim. The voice of the Lord is the twin voices of life and life. Life and light. So light is who God is. Light is who you are. So when you say God lives in me, you say I am light. I am light. I am Light. You are light. My voice is light. My voice can activate light. So, which means that God is in my voice. Or the devil is in my voice. Which one is it? So which means every time you say something that is not God, you create your own devils. But every time you speak with the voice of light, the darkness dissipates. Jesus came into the world as light. It's funny, the Bible says in the beginning was the word. And then later on goes, in him was and his life was the light. Ah. Bible is just incredible. You know, his Bible says you used to be darkness but now you are light. But we like to say it this way. I used to be in darkness. No, you were not in darkness. You were the darkness. But now you are light. You're not just enlightened. You are light. So, how do you use the habitation of light, which is your voice? Let there be light. Um, God said, let there be light. And the darkness dissipated. But by the way, yes, yes, I, I want to end with this. This is too, too much fun. God, the Bible says about God, says that even the darkness is light to you. 
So let's listen. If someone is light, even darkness becomes light to them. That's what the Bible says. God is light. Even the darkness is light to you. And one, 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 one place says, Oh Lord, you are the one who sees in the darkness. So I said, God sees in the darkness because God is light. If you're not seeing in the darkness, maybe you are not light. But if you are light, it is impossible for you to be blinded by darkness. So now you are light. There is no darkness in this world that can overcome you. Light. The funny thing is, when you are a true light, everything becomes revealed. If you really light, the world doesn't want you because your presence throws the light, throws everything into. You are light. And the way you reveal your ubiquitous presence is by how you use your voice. So every time you say something that is not, oh, anyway, I said every word you do, you speak, is a revelation of what it is you want. Let's stand up. Thank you for joining us for today's message. We pray you've been blessed by it. For more from Dr. O, please go to www.activate.com.